people, they skip their suhoor. Some people, they have an early suhoor. That is, they have the suhoor one or two hours before the Fajr time. In fact, suhoor is a blessing. Every Muslim should have it. And the Prophet said, we should delay the suhoor as much as possible. We should have it till just before the Fajr time. Ramadan comes along, some people act as if a food festival has come to town. We have this type of food and that type and this appetizer and that. And Ramadan is actually a month of fasting. That means that the month is not about eating. The month is actually about feeding. Feeding the needy people, putting in the effort. The Prophet ﷺ said whoever feeds a fasting person gets the reward of that fasting person with the same reward without taking away from that fasting person. So this Ramadan, don't focus so much on attending all these food festivals, focus on feeding the needy. The third mistake committed by Muslims in this category is that they delay opening their fast. They delay the iftar. And our Prophet Muhammad said that the people will be good as long as they hasten in breaking the iftar. That means immediately after sunset, they should break the iftar. Iftar parties are actually a very, very good thing as long as some conditions are met. It's very good because, alhamdulillah, in the month of Ramadan, you feed someone and subhanAllah, you get the reward of every single person that you have fed. And so I always say, you know, if thought parties are actually good, as long as the other acts of worship, or for example, our taraweeh prayer, or maghrib prayer, or isha prayer, they're not suffering because of the iftar party. Or, subhanAllah, one of the problems with iftar parties is sometimes uh, we'll commit sins uh, during this iftar party. This subhanAllah goes against the whole spirit of the month of Ramadan where we're supposed to cut out all sins. Obviously, we cut out all sins in the whole year, but especially where we work extra hard in the month of Ramadan. So make sure that, yeah, have the iftar party. Alhamdulillah, make the intention that you're feeding your brothers and sisters. Make the intention that you're bringing people together. Make the intention that you are encouraging one another. Uh, to do goodness and all that are great reasons to have iftar parties but just make sure that the iftar party is not causing you like I said delay your maghrib or not pray isha or delay your taraweeh or not pray taraweeh at all One important thing that I've been witnessing lately is that people are unable to manage their anger now it's like they have a short temper or something or it's because they can't have their cigarette or their coffee so they just release their anger and become very furious at you and make you feel like it's the end of the world. Allahu Akbar. Now how can we solve this issue? We can solve this issue by knowing that when you do not control your anger in Ramadan, what happens? You are wounding your fast up. I'm not saying that it May, I'm not saying that it's not accepted, it may be accepted, but you're wounding it up just like when you bring a man and you start smacking him around until he has bruises all over his face and you see the blood everywhere and all that. Same thing with fasting. When you fast and you start getting angry at everybody, you are wounding your fasting up. Here in this case we say hold up, hold up, stop it, calm down. Relax. Say, "A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan rajeem Say, "I seek refuge with Allah from the from the devil, the devil, the shaytan." During the month of Ramadan, you will find the masjids completely packed out during tarawih prayers, which is amazing. But then, during the five daily prayers, you will notice the masjids are nowhere near as packed. Unfortunately, many people have mixed up their priorities. The farz obligatory five daily prayers have been put below the Sunnah Taraweeh prayers. Although nobody can deny the importance of the Taraweeh prayers, which comes with an abundance of rewards and blessings, the five daily prayers will always be greater and above all the Sunnah or optional prayers. So please, do not neglect your obligations this month. This world, addiction to the things of this world is a curse. So we do need to handle our devices for social media in a very positive and calculated way. 
We can't just, just do it whenever we feel like, however we feel like. So we have the choice of either making our social media experience something which is going to be on our scale of good deeds or something which is not going to be on our scale of good deeds. We have to decide beforehand. We're already caught up. We can't live without our phones. At least when we're going on the phones, we should be conscious of the impact which this phone has on ourselves as well as on others. There is so much information there, so much corruption there. Some people call it, instead of the internet, they call it the fitna net. So we best should say Bismillah before we even get on. Before we turn it on and start, we say Bismillah. Now, if we are not able to say Bismillah, this is telling us something. We're going on with the wrong intention. There's no harm in keeping contact with your friends, your circle, um, certain programs, etc. There's no harm, but we have to make sure that whatever we are interacting with is from the halal. During Ramadan, many Muslims try to finish the Quran as fast as possible. Some people finish reciting it two, three, or even five times. Subhanallah, as though it's a speeding competition. It is recited without any understanding or contemplation. Although there is always benefit in reciting the verses of the Quran, there is a greater benefit in reciting with understanding because the purpose of the Quran is to guide mankind. And how can we be guided if we don't take time to understand the verses? So make this the month you truly connect with the Quran. The purpose of Ramadan is to reconnect the believer to the Book of Allah like they, they're starting over. And the reason that's important is because the believer is supposed to reconnect humanity with the Book of Allah. The way we do that in Ramadan, the way the first generation did that in Ramadan, the Prophet ﷺ institutionalized additional prayers. Umar bin al-Khattab saw that people might lose out on that, so he made it into congregational, what we call the Taraweeh prayer. Yeah? And it became an institution in this Ummah. Now that institution, if you imagine the Sahaba, every time they stood in prayer and they heard Baqarah, Ali Imran, Nisa being recited, they heard the message and they understood the message. They appreciated the miracle, all in the Salah. All in the Salah. You know, you sometimes you hear a powerful lecture. For them, standing in the Salah is hearing a lecture from Allah. That's what it was. They were listening to a khutbah, a maw'idha from Allah when they're standing in prayer, yes? Mm -hmm. And that was the institution. It was supposed to reconnect us with Allah Azza wa Jal in the most beautiful of ways. Okay, a few centuries later, we also have the Taraweeh prayer. Is there a difference between the way we conduct our prayers today and the pray and the spirit of those prayers of Umar bin Khattab radiAllahu ta'ala anhu? Uh, there's a fundamental difference. The vast majority of you and me that are standing behind the Imam as he's reciting the word of Allah are not hanging over every word lost and mesmerized in reflection. Rather, we are wondering, was that the first or the second? Are we on 14 or on 15? When is the ruku' coming? If the Imam takes so much as a long breath, you're like, <sighs> and then he goes on to the next time, like, oh, okay, 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 okay. You know, some of my friends that lead Taraweeh, they're like, they're on purpose. When they get to Ayatul Kursi, they take a pause. Allahu. La ilaha illahu al hayyul al qayyum. And everybody's like, oh yeah. Oh God. I thought it was Allahu Akbar. <laughs> you know? What I'm trying to get at, uh, besides the joke, is there's a tragedy in the Ummah. This month was supposed to genuinely reconnect us with the guidance and the appreciation and the awe of the Quran so it can separate right and wrong for us again. But today, our relationship with the Qur'an has been reduced to an artificial one where we stand in prayer and the vast majority of us don't know what's being recited. We run after the best reciter and stand behind them and wonder why the person next to us is crying. And some people are crying because they don't understand. And that's a good thing. That's a beautiful thing by itself. But then there are just a few that understand and they're moved. Sometimes the Imam himself is moved. And then we're completely okay with the culture that even the one leading us in prayer has no idea what they're reciting. And we're okay with that. We're okay with that. We've accepted that as a, as a tradition. Yeah? 
Is there something wrong with this? There's, you see some problem? We have violated the spirit of Ramadan so badly on every account, on every account. And then on top of that, if you didn't finish the recitation of the entire Quran, that's why we got to speed it up in the last few days. And there's complaints about this reciter is reciting too slowly. Who cares about finishing the Quran in Ramadan? I'd rather we pray less, but pray with attention and pray with awe, pray with understanding, get some guidance for it, reflect. That's what the spirit of this prayer was supposed to be. Many of the Muslims, they stay awake the full night and then they sleep in the day. And they do the normal activity at the night time and sleep in the daytime. They're converting day into night and night into day and the whole purpose of fasting is defeated.